Uh. All right, missions today: destroy a card five, spell card three, link summon. Okay. Do it. Oh, we can get the login right. All right, how shall we link summon? Oh, I think I've got a solution. Also, don't we need to link summon three for the uh, proficiency? Um, yes, we do. Okay. Uh, yep, good. All right, well, that just means what we'll do is use our best link deck, which will be right here in ranked. Will be yeah. uh, select deck. Next, our deck will be <laughs> probably that one. Um, now uh, we'll go with full counter. Yeah, plenty of link stuff in here. Um, yep, looks good to me. Um, nice. Huh, I think I do need to add the other Parshath, but other than that, that looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, this card right here. Um, what to take out? I guess we can finally take out BLS. Yeah, it's not a... Mm. Yeah. Finally take out BLS for that. Could take this out. Uh, two level four. Mm, that's actually a pretty good effect. Uh, mm. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Not bad, honestly. Huh. Well, this card's not too bad. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, is this shiny? Ooh, I think it is. Shiny. Put the shine in there. Alright. And, uh, oh, is this shiny? Oh, it is, yeah. Shiny. Alrighty, let's try to link summon, I guess. I don't know. Wish me luck, I guess. All right. Okay, pretty straightforward start for us. We'll play Sanctum. Mm -hmm. Then we'll play Guiding right here. Okay. Set Rebirth. Yes. It's mode for them. Oh, that's kind of what we want to see here. Yeah. All right, let's see if they've got a infinite and permanent with Venus. That is true light. And I'm not really going to stop that. <laughs>
there's true light to grab ultimate fusion <laughs> okay so they're clearly playing blue eyes all right oh, we'll play venus if they ash okay wait venus again and we want the four uh monsters for christia so how do i do this let me think here how do i get four for christia hmm. i think what we do is do this because uh, we could send um an agent card to the grave and also just pop true light here straight up um how many do we have right now hmm i gotta think here we got two once we go into parsheth we'll have four so what i should do is just add uh earth yeah uh wait wait because wait, i could tribute ball hmm. wait yeah i could tribute ball okay here's the thing is i could send one now tribute I gotta think. No. No, let's add, um, yeah, let's send this to the grave. Okay, and then tribute ball. Okay. Destroy true light. Okay, so that destroys that card. That was white stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, see, this is what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, I was hoping something like that would trigger. So I can show strike, right? Discard strike. Right, that goes to the deck. Special summon a monster, yeah. We go with Parsheth here. And we know what that face down is. It's ultimate fusion. And they can't activate it this turn. So, oh, we didn't even need to discard strike. Um, well, this should really be over then. So we um, use Parsheth, discard strike. Now we grab Hyperion. Um, yeah. So this should be quickly over. Um, bring out Hyperion, pop that. Seems good to me. Um, so we'll, yeah. I mean, I could have played Christia there, but I don't think we need to. <laughs> so, yeah. Grab Neptune. Okay. Sanctuary in the sky. Activate Sanctuary in the sky. Okay. Then we, yeah. We just go bowling chat. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. They saw the writing on the wall there. So, yeah. There's Agent OTK, guys. So, there you go. <laughs> Agents better than blue eyes confirmed. Nah, uh, Venus was just a hell of a draw right there. <laughs> Without Venus, we we bricked, man. We we weren't gonna we weren't gonna be doing much. I guess Bountiful Artemis would have also been pretty clutch there. But yeah, four dailies, uh, spell card, trap card, special summon, and normal summons. Nice. All right. Well, with that, our dailies are done. Uh, well, enough of them are done. To uh, <laughs> that's funny. We we only link some at once too. Um, yeah, um, I guess I can exceed summon a monster. That isn't too hard, so, well, uh, anyway. Let's switch to the Ogdoatic deck. <coughs> oh, sorry. And try to go into King of the Feral Imps and call it good, yeah. I mean, I guess I could, I could also go cash... Like a real cash deck. Um, fine, 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 fine. We'll go cash dark magician. Yeah. yeah, we'll go with this. I mean, we can exceed summon fairly quickly here, so. Okay. Uh-oh, win and you'll gain a rank. Ooh, I'm not sure if we want to do that. <laughs> yeah, because we still are in pretty low gold. And I am trying to get all the proficiencies first. 
So let me just surrender here real quick. Yeah, let me surrender. Let me surrender here. Yeah, because I really don't want to rank up. So, go VIP. <laughs> Let's see what VIP was playing there. I might not have even had a chance. Let's see. VIP. Hmm. Oh, a cyber kind of climb deck? It's got to be because they have mining. Hmm. This deck look, looks interesting. I kind of like it, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Uh, let's go again. Check on something here real quick. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. My uh, download's almost finished. Um. What do we got here? Not much. Well, actually. Huh. Let me go full armor master. <laughs> I could also go Barone. Uh, I don't remember if we had a. If we had a synchro daily, but you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, we'll go with that. And response. Response. Uh, Zixon's thinking. Huh. Guess they have some kind of response, because this ain't on me. <laughs> What's up, Hot Buster? How's it going? Huh. Interesting choice of special summon Scareclaw here. <laughs> Good to see you today. That's interesting. So there goes Overlap. Hmm. Hmm. Negate its effects till the end of the turn. Uh, I get that, but, um, okay. Guess I'll end the turn, then. Huh. That's interesting. So now Barone's back online, right? Pretty sure. Anyway, let's do uh, Max C. <laughs> hmm. I guess maybe they were trying to bait the negate there, but mm, I don't know. <laughs> uh, now, we can Barone that, so... Alright, so Maxi's online. And let's see what they do here. I would assume they still OTK, so. I mean, it is cash, so. It old cash money. Uh, that's funny, I could actually return it right now. Um, hmm. You know? Not bad. I trust my instincts on this one, so. Yeah, we'll actually return it, and uh, we'll bring this out. I have a feeling they'd get past Barone regardless, so let's just do this, yeah. Barone back in the FED. Yeah, might as well. <laughs> Already used this negate, so 
Might as well. Hmm. All right, there is a Rhino Heart. All right, so we get a card. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Main phase. So what would I banish? Oh, I'd banish birth, right? Right, right. I remember. <laughs> but you'd hear they'll modulate the level and, uh, you know, do the usual combo. <sighs> All right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Using Fenrir to grab uh, probably Unicorn. That's the usual out uh, of here. Yep. Looks like a corn to me. Hmm. Okay. End of main phase. Right, because they're just going to use Fenrir's effect. Mm-hmm. And we'll take the hit. No need to do anything. Take the hit. One face down, I'd expect. Nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. That's... Okay. Hmm. Well... I think here we have to go birth and we kind of just have to hope for the best here. So normal this. Um, meal from the top of our deck. Hope we hit a cash card, I guess. Um, okay. Oh, we did hit one. Wow. We hit a uh, unicorn. <laughs> Funny. Okay, well, we got lucky there. Uh, we hit Unicorn, put Unicorn over here. And then with the Unicorn, we can grab um, Chioshish, yeah? That's nice. Alright, and then we do some cash gaming, man. I don't know what to say. So activate Unicorn to banish their Zeus, probably. Uh, well, they have Barone. Um, we could go after Shangri Era. Uh, Hex. Yeah, let's just get their Zeus out of here. I mean, that seems like a good call. Alright, main two. Osis. Alright. And we'll try to grab something here. Um, are the effects negated? I always forget on Osis. Uh, they are not. Well, <laughs> like this card's too good or something. We'll grab Ogre. It's all Ogre now, chat. Ogre effect. We grab Reparaciones. And we'll set Reparaciones. And here we go. What's happening now? Underlay, underlay, mama, ira, ira, uh oh. Put your head up. Yeah, that's, uh, there we go. Dingery, ira. Okie dokie. And my turn. Draw phase? Nope. Nope. And by phase. Uh, let's play this. Reparaciones. Uh, yeah, let's activate Ida, because why not? Let's grab, um, probably just Fenrir. Oh, what happened to my other Fenrir? Did I only put one in here? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, there are no Fenrir in here. I'm sorry, what? I'm playing without any Fenrir. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> um, let's just play... Yeah, I don't know. Um, unit? 
what now? Let's just throw freaking uh, ogre up in here, I guess. What? <laughs> why am I not playing two Fenrir in this deck? I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking with this one. I guess to make space for Dark Magic, but like Fenrir is the best card. <laughs> like, that didn't make sense. All right, well, they get uh, Birth or Theosis or whatever. Excuse me. Uh, I guess we can play Unicorn. And, I mean, Ogre. And, I guess. There's Birth right there. Wow, they <laughs> had two Births coming up. Um, ah, nice evenly matched, bro. Um, I guess let's pick out. Well, we want we don't want them to have to fill spell, and we don't. So, yeah, I'll, I'll actually take that out. Yeah, um, seems pretty good. We'll activate Ida. Ida Shake. All right, so they're gonna snipe our extra deck. Uh, doesn't really matter what they take out. Uh, oh yeah. uh, their turn's not done because they still got Theosis and stuff. Right, Barons. Theosis? Yep. Imagine they'll grab their ogre too. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Uh, or, I mean, that makes sense, yeah. Oh, right, we can do this now. Uh, you know what? Sure. They got resources in the graveyard. Let's get rid of them. We'll get rid of this. Um, This and this. Yep, all three of those are pretty good resources. So, yeah, we'll get rid of those. Another lock. Another zone lock. Alrighty. And there goes our Shangri Era, so not a problem. Cash monster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that is some thrilling gameplay, guys. Wow. Never seen combos like this. Alright. Ira. Alright. Guys, heart. Ugh. Hmm, sorry. Mm hmm. Big bag. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We pulled that card yesterday, I think. I think we pulled Big Bang yesterday, which is pretty interesting. All right. Full combo with Big Bang. They should win here because they get, uh, uh, yeah. Full cash combo. Uh, sure. We'll hand rip one. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the necro face tech. That's so funny. Uh, let's just get rid of their monster reborn. Some, some pretty nice gas. There we go. Yep. Yeah. And then you go into uh, uh short, yeah. Not bad. Hmm. And that should be enough damage. Yeah, yeah. I've only got twenty eight hundred lives, so not bad. Uh. 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 Oh yeah. What fun and interactive gameplay we have here. This is what we call fun, chat. See my face? Face is having fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, they're just doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah, can't really be mad at them either. I mean, if I wanted to, I could craft like a very similar... All of the Big Bang and stuff, but no, nah, no. Nah. We actually want to lose there because we want to stay in low gold. But yeah, this, hey guys, this this deck belongs in gold. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Present card. That's interesting. Oh, to deck them. Nice. That's actually pretty smart. That's pretty smart, amigo. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, yep. We're going to get on out of here. Go here. 
and we're gonna go here. So I did get one more daily. Uh, oh, the synchro did count. Nice for Barone. Nice. All right. Well, there we go, guys. That's it for the master duel portion of today's stream. So we're done. All right, man. That feels good. Uh, yep. Just do do some dailies and leave. Feels good, man. Feels right. Ah, uh, so glad it's not the Duelist Cup anymore. <laughs> That's a good feeling. That. Right. All right. So from here... Let's see, I think, what else do we have today? I know I wanted to do do the dailies, that's, that's first of all, so like log in and do that. Um, forgot what else I was supposed to do today. Um, oh, that's right, yeah, see this? Actually, I'm supposed to shave today, yeah. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, I do need to check this real quick. Let me do a check a check. Mm. All right. mm. Do it. Mm hmm. Huh. Hmm. What in the world? What in the world? Oh, no. I tell you, crazy. It is crazy out of here, man. <laughs> uh uh. Ain't no way, fam. Ain't no way. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just tell you guys what's going on. Very simple misunderstanding, miscommunication. <laughs> Basically, they're mad over nothing. Yep. So, man, be mad all you like. Okay. I'll be darned.
Yeah, man, miscommunication, I tell you. Big time miscommunication. All right. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to mute Discord right here. So, yeah, I made it pretty clear right there. So, <laughs> excuse me, that's pretty interesting. Oh. <sighs> Mm hmm but anyway do 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 all right um it is almost two. I think I was needing to do some YouTube editing stuff. I don't, well, I honestly, wait. When's the last time I posted a video? I can check the analytics. Especially, I think I posted like a three-hour VOD. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I posted the uh, the Ritual Festival. <laughs> like, r why Ritual decks suck. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good VOD, honestly. Um, When did I post this? Um, uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, I think I did post this yesterday, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, 23 hours ago. Okay, honestly, that's good enough. Um, yeah, we'll just, uh, hmm, we'll not do anything on YouTube today, honestly. All right, fair enough, because that's pretty, uh, <laughs> Mm, yeah. Uh for those of you like uh wondering uh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so I commented on someone's uh Duelist of the <laughs> Roses video and um uh someone replied uh, cuz I was making a comment about Mako Tsunami. They replied, "Guess I got to watch out for airborne harpoons." <laughs> cuz I cuz I made a comment like, "Hey, it's that freaky fish guy." <laughs> I am not that freaky fish guy, you know. That's funny. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so uh, someone had a question about reincarnation in uh, Duels of the Roses, and they were just asking, like, what is reincarnate? Like, and I probably said, um, I kind of advised them, like, you should probably suffer said for it. 
or you reincarnate, always save the game. That way, if you get three cards that aren't really helpful, you can back out to the title menu. And let me capitalize it. Title. Yeah, there we go. And continue the campaign again. Then you can try to reincarnate the same card and get three different. So yeah, yeah, because they they were asking um in one of my recent uh, vods, you know, <laughs> about uh like oh oh what do you mean you're gonna software set on the reincarnation or or like how do you reincarnate? But uh just so you know, it's a uh, L three. So in the game, yeah, L three, which is like you press the uh dead life stuff thumbstick down. Now if you're using um PSX PCSX two, I don't know what the button is, but you know. As um, I don't I don't use that emulator, but there you go. Because so, I know a lot of people play on uh, PC e, e, PC X X two. So, uh, but yeah, for PS two, it's the left thumbstick. Oh, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I was I wouldn't really say anything, but I was just kind of type and type and type and type. But that's that's what I was responding to. <laughs> um, yeah, but for YouTube, I don't think I'll. Now let me check my comments actually. Yeah, I don't think I'll post anything today. We've basically posted pretty recent content. Um, now, one thing I do need to you, do for YouTube. So today, an eight-hour, yeah, yeah, eight-hour stream. <laughs> uh, it, it expires today on my Twitch. Um, and I started the download for the VOD. Uh, yeah, an eight-hour stream. Holy shit, I can't believe I even had one of those. But um, yeah, it looks like the download's done. Um Jeez, man. Um, yeah, so I should probably start uploading this right now and, like, get this off of my computer because, like, dude, yeah, yeah, look at my hard drive space. Okay, okay, so I'm just going to, like, rename this 8-Hour VOD in all caps, and then, yeah, I'm going to start uploading it on my YouTube. Yeah, I will upload that because, like, I need to get that off my YouTube and delete it, like, as soon as possible. But I mean, obviously, it's an 8-Hour VOD. I I don't want that sitting on my computer for forever. Heck no. <laughs> I'm just going to title eight hour pod. Jeez. I'll, I'll literally t put that in the title. She's okay. So then we go over here to YouTube. Sorry to do this like on stream or whatever, but I mean, obviously I need to start that uploading process now. <laughs> Cause I'll be honest guys, this eight hour VOD upload, it probably won't be finished until tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes, tomorrow. I'm gonna have to leave my computer on overnight. <laughs> and also, like, sorry, this may actually like tank the frames, but you know, it's just got to be done. <laughs> like, you guys understand, this is an eight-hour vod. Jeez, and I don't even know what all I played in the vod. I just saw like on the uh, on the download that you know the size of the gigabytes, and I was like, what the? <laughs> you know, because normally I download like all the vods I can. Right. I mean, that just makes sense, you know, because it's basically free content for my YouTube, you know, for my YouTube channel. So, <laughs> like, dude, what the heck? Yeah, I can't believe this VOD is uh, eight hours, but yeah, I don't even know what. I, maybe I even fell asleep during this VOD, you know, fell asleep during the game, left the game on, and then just kind of woke up and started playing. I, I don't know, because I have had that happen before. Anyway, <laughs> he's, uh, yeah. I guess I'll put it in the Master Duel category. I don't know what I was even doing, but, yeah, and of course, I'll make this one private, but, geez, yeah, this is going to take a while. I'm gonna literally going to have to babysit this upload, and what I mean by that is, like, you know, um, we lose connection out here in Wisconsin, you know, all the time, you know, because we're in the boonies, we're in the south, we're, yeah, so I'm going to have to babysit this one, And but, but what I mean by that is, like, sometimes when I'm uploading, especially a really, really, huge file um yeah i'll i'll literally like check out check in on, on it especially the first 30 minutes i'll check in on it like every five minutes and for some reason it's the first 30 and like anyone who owns a youtube channel first of all i love you and second of all thank you it's like you're one of the few people who know what i'm talking about who are like the normal uploading process doesn't seem to like it doesn't seem to be like rooted until those first 30 minutes of pet like hopefully somebody out there gets what I'm saying and has like had the same problem because maybe it's just because we're in the boonies because we're in a uh, Wisconsin maybe maybe that's what it is but I don't know anyway <laughs> huh 
All right. Oh. Oh, my God. oh man. That felt good. I'm pretty sure I got what I need to be done done. Um I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking. Um we haven't played chess in a while. What do I want to do? That that's what I have to think. I we haven't played chess in a while. You know something else that we've never done? An IRL stream. <laughs> I I should do one of those. I should do like an IRL stream here in Wisconsin sometime. Just kind of show you guys the city. I'm sorry, the farmland. Yeehaw. And by farmland, I mean I would drive like two hours that way. You know, two hours that way. And then show you guys the farmland. And then pretend I lived there. No, 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 no. No, seriously, like... I've thought about what to do for my first IRL stream. And that's what I thought about. I was just like, hey, man, I really want to do an IRL stream and just kind of talk about blah, 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 blah. This is the state I live in. This is the city I live in. And it's not Wisconsin. And uh, but no, like literally, I would lie to you guys. I, I'm just letting you know, if I ever did an IRL stream, I would drive two hours in either direction. And yeah, just pretended I live there and lie and, you know. Just a vlog, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I talk a lot. So, yeah, like literally. I'm just letting you guys know when you see an IRL stream, yeah, three months from now, I, I don't actually live there. <laughs> you think you guys think I'm going to dox myself? That's stupid. You think I'm stupid? Hey, it may be stupid, but it's also dumb. Sorry, Patrick, star quotes, but yeah. Like, no, that I I actually would like to do some IRL streams. You know, you know, you you guys know the exact IRL stream I'd like to do, camping. But it's kind of hard to do, and like you know, I want to show you guys. Hey, here's how to start a fire from scratch, without, like like literally, you you do it survival style. You don't use any matches. You don't use any like, yeah. You don't use any outside help. You don't use, um, what do they call that? Uh, one of those fire starters. You don't use any of that. Like, I, I, cause I know how to do it. And like, that would be a fun stream. It'd be like an educational stream. But, um, now nah, I can't show you guys where I live. It's, uh, too dangerous, man. There's some crazy people in the city. So, and quite frankly, some of them, yeah, are some unsavory characters. And how do I know? Well, because I used to be one of them. That's how I know. <laughs> uh, anyway. <clears throat> what do I want to stream? I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep it on just chatting. Kind of fun. Um, so, this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about. So, recently, by recently, I mean... It's an idea that's rooted in my head. Somebody asked me how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Or how to... They asked me to teach them how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, here's the thing. I get viewers all the time. And subscribers and like face... Especially on Facebook. Uh, people ask me like, Hey man, how do you play Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, I just want to play it. You know, for fun. You know, fun. Good old-fashioned, old American. Fun. I think the best way I could teach you guys how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I literally just had this idea. Right. This person already wants to learn how to play. This person I'm thinking of. If I found another person who also wanted to learn how to play, that's the best way to, and like, as weird as this is, they would both let me stream it. That's the best way to learn how to play. Because, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you don't want to play someone who is on a different, like, obviously, I'm like a veteran or whatever. I've been doing this for years, and that's fine. Basically, here's what would do. I would referee the match. What do I mean by that? It's just like, if any illegal action takes place, I would, like, point it out point out what went wrong, and then we would rewind the game state. You know what I mean? And, like, that's literally, like, I would love to show that for you guys. At some point, you know, new duelist versus new duelist. Or, like, even, I mean, I do have a couple of uh, friends that are also, like, really novice duelists. They're pretty new. Well, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, What's up, Necromancer? Good to see you. No, but, um, but that's actually a very, that sounds like a good YouTube video idea. The problem is I need two people to not only go through with it, they both have to be, a, have to have it agreed to be filmed. That's the most challenging part. The, the it being filmed part, not the, cause I'm fine teaching either one of them. Really? The problem is, Hey man, there's some people out here. They don't want to be on camera. And quite frankly, I understand. Um, yeah, I hope your day is going good, Necromancer1428. <laughs> um, are you a new player? <laughs> Would you like to be on camera and help me? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was thinking about what to play today. Uh, we just did the Master Duel dailies, like, what, five minutes ago? Like, five minutes ago. So now, uh, honestly, the best way to, uh, hmm, I couldn't disagree more, Necromancer, because you see, you, you know the way I was going to teach them? I'll show you. Uh, pick 40 cards. Pick 40. Pick 40, you both play. <laughs> and the reason I was going to teach them both that way is the one that requested that I teach her, he said, uh, yeah, tabletop. That's the way she wants to learn. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> Which hey, is fine by me. If someone has a preferred learning avenue, I usually just kind of, yeah, <laughs> you want tabletop. All right. I got you, fam. I got the, I got the resources to do it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like, literally, I was just like, and she saw a couple of my binders was at, uh, at where we were at. Yeah, yeah, I guess that would be smart is if I just said, okay, I'll finance the learning. And, you know, I took Duelist Novice 1 and Novice 2, and I said, okay, these are starter decks. Both of you pick one. It'd probably be helpful if you both pick two different ones, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, structured decks, yeah. That would be pretty, uh, that would help. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that is a good idea. Mm. Yeah, and like literally, like what I was saying is like, you know, you line up on one on this side of the table, one on that side, and just, I literally don't say anything. <laughs> they just shuffle, draw, and, you know, basically here's how the learning goes. Attempt to do something. How do you play? I don't know. Read the card and try to do something. If you're wrong, I'll tell you. <laughs> And it's just like, yeah, you just tell them, okay, four stars or less. Most of the time, read the card. If the card says you can do it, you can do it. So teach them that synchro. Ooh, addition? Yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Synchro is fairly easy to learn. Um, what's the newest, what's the easiest summoning mechanic to learn from the extra deck? To me, it's actually exceeds because it's very easy. Like, all you need is like, oh, I need two fours. I need two threes. I need 
four fives. Like, that's easy. You know, you don't have to add. You just take two of the same, you know, and then uh, link. I, I mean, I guess that is easy. Kind of. You know, explaining co-linking, though, is... Uh, <laughs> that is pretty... Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not a necessary mechanic anymore. Can I just talk about how did co-linking one of the best um, effects in Yu-Gi-Oh! How did co-linking become non-existent? I'll tell you how. Nightmares were too good. <laughs> <laughs> Necromancer, can we just talk about this? Co-linking, you know, you know where the arrows are pointing at each other, you know, or whatever. So, co-linking and you linking. <laughs> Can we talk about how that used to be a strategy, and it used to be a damn good strategy? I feel like no one even uses co-linking effects anymore. Like, yeah, you go to a tournament or you go to Master Door, you go to. You go anywhere, I haven't seen one co-linking effect resolve in like, yeah, 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 ever since the Nightmare Engine was banned, I haven't seen one co-linking, okay, I think the one co-link effect that might have resolved, that you know, in a match I played, in a match I played, maybe was like three years ago. I don't think... I. It, it's almost like co-linking doesn't exist. Because I guess it doesn't need to. <laughs> the, the speed of the game and like how good the cards are, you don't even need to co-link. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's kind of weird. That and, and I don't know why I just thought about this. Hey, hey, Tim, maybe we should clip this. This is like the co-link segment. <laughs> But um, how did co-linking, like, one of the easiest things to understand in terms of... Well, I guess also the fact that Master Rule 4 ended, kind of... <laughs> uh, I think that also... Um, I'm not going to say that fixed co-linking, but the fact that Master Rule 4 is no longer in effect... Um, <laughs> I think it made people not notice arrows as much. Well, and also, like, just the newest cards, like the newest archetypes, don't have co-link effects. They just don't. Or if they do, they're, like, lame effects that don't come up. Uh, what, wait. Yeah, yeah, for the love of God, never put an Exceed monster in the extra monster zone. Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty smart, Necromancer. I mean, same for... Okay, the okay. there are exceptions. What synchro monsters should you put in the EMZ? Junk Speeder. Okay, that's it. That's the whole list. <laughs> um, yeah. Or I guess you can put an Exeed monster... In the EMZ, if some link monsters get bonus effects, if you use an exceeds monster as material. So, I guess if you're going to link it off anyway, and it gets a, your new link gets a bonus effect, if it has an exceeds as a material, I guess do that. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think the only one you want in the EMZ is like Junk Speeder. I can also see Cash Tira uh, Shangri Era. I, I can see that in the EMZ. You know, because you want as many um, Cash Monsters summoned as possible, you know, from the deck. So I can see that. Uh, Shangri Era. Because you don't, I mean, I guess you can link in Cash, but you don't, you don't have to, you know. So, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd say junk speeder. Yeah, yeah, you can stick junk speeder. That's a synchro you can stick in the MZ. I'm sure there are others that uh, just vomit monsters from the deck that I can't think of right now. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Pray they limit all those cards to one cash. Oh, you mean in uh, Master Duel? Uh, yeah, they're not gonna do that. Well, until like the only chance for those cards to be limited, um, we clearly saw from Tier Elements format. Yeah, you gotta wait in, in a Shizu cards format. You know, in Master Duel, in Master Duel. Yeah, you gotta at least wait till those cards exit the shop. I'm surprised they even limited Fenrir to two. And uh, cash tier elements to one. And, and the field spill. I mean, the fact that they limited the field spill to one on release, that was kind of helpful, honestly. Because <laughs> can you imagine the consistency if uh, the field spill is at three? I mean, you know. Yeah, I know some people don't like cash. But, you know, I like cash. And you know what kind of cash I like? I like Karakuri Cash Cash, because that was the original cash, and uh, it's all right. I also like Banks, because, uh, yeah, man, um, yeah, Cash ain't so bad. <laughs> um, a band that I'm still recovering from, oh, yeah, 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 that was, uh, yeah, I, I kind of get that one. I kind of do, but. I, I think they should allow the wind statue. I really do. They should allow the wind statue. And like, <laughs> as weird of, as an errata as this would be, all they would have to do on some morgue, you know, the Link 3 some morgue that vomits out the statue. All they would have to do, used to play, yeah, yeah, yeah. All they would have to do to unban the statue is say the following. Okay, we're going to errata some org to say, you can't special summon one monster. There's only one winged beast in the entire game. You can't special summon. It's the statue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, you know, everything else is fine. It's just like, you can special summon any winged be beast from your deck on the end phase, except for barrier statue of the storm. <laughs> like, if, if they did that, you could, un you could, you could unban, you could put the statue at one. Or two, or, or or whatever. Just make some more able to do any wing beast, except because that's that is a little too easy. I'll confess, it's a little too. And plus, like, there's some cheese. There's some cheese. <laughs> well, like, I'm okay with the statue coming off, as long as they make it clear with some morg and other some morg like effects. Like, okay, man, <laughs> we don't want you getting Jalgen at the end phase. Okay, I mean. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's essentially what it is, right? Don't get me wrong. The statue lock is great. And I, I like some work too. I like Harpy Ladies too. But like, I'm also objective enough to realize like, okay, it's kind of unfair that you get a full field plus Jalgen and uh, <laughs> you get it so easily. You know what I mean? Uh, what's worse, a 1K hurdle or a little negate? I mean... Uh, the, the the problem with the Samorg uh, boards are also that Samorg has access to Harpy's Feather Store, <laughs> which means not only can you lock down special summoning, uh, you can also turn off all monster effects for a turn, you know, if you're lucky enough, which, you know, I can see why they hit the statue. It's like, <laughs> that's a little... You know, uh, <laughs> that's a little too easy. I can see why they did it. I mean, I, I like some more. I like Harpies. You like Harpies. At the same time, though, I'm objective enough to realize, yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> you know, I, I don't care. Hey, man, some people are lucky enough to draw the one of. And, you know, because I, I know because I've done it, you know, like I've done it like in a tournament. <laughs> And, you know, people just kind of hated me. And I was like, that's right. That's right. You're supposed to hate me. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. I, I can see why they did it. 
Hey, but bro, I, I, did, I did that at locals and people were just like, you know what, Flood? Fuck you, man. <laughs> I was just like, hey, man, <laughs> not my fault you can't do anything. Get good. <laughs> Get good, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Nah, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, and, and I guess to add to your point, Necromancer, you can't really search the barrier statue either. Um, but, you know, I don't I think it'd be fine. I think it would be fine to come back, but like, <laughs> just take your notes. <laughs> no, that was, that was a fun locals though. That was fun. Cause we had, uh, we had eight people that, that weekend and yeah, all I did was take some org and the statue and, oh, and by the way, I was only playing one copy of Featherstorm. And, uh, <laughs> bro, like in all the matches, I drew it at least once a match. And in the finals, I drew it twice. So, yeah, pretty lucky. I mean, they cut my deck. It's just, you know, whoops. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, Yeah, so I was thinking about a game to play, and to be quite frank, I don't really know. Oh, and it's not Master Duels, so. Because we already did our dailies in there. You see, here's the thing, is I actually thought our dailies would take an hour, and now I don't know what to do. Um, hmm. I could play that game. That, that honestly doesn't sound too bad. Huh. I guess I could, um... Or we could just keep talking. That's cool. Uh, I see if I see a... Oh. I mean, that's that's smart. Yeah. Pretty smart. Um, boy, what game should I play right now? Hmm. Well, obviously, it's going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh game. Uh, so here's the thing. Right now on my channel, we're running, like, Duels of the Roses. We're running GX Duel Academy. We're running uh, Nightmare Troubadour. Man, we're running, um, have you ever heard of a game called, what? Bomb Rush, wait, what? Cyberfunk. No, I have not. Was that like a platformer? Hmm, that sounds interesting. Hmm. I have heard of a uh, Bomberman. Is it related to that? Um. Hmm. I mean, I could also play Pokemon Platinum Randomizer. Uh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. Um, let's see. As a wait, really? It's that good, huh? Hmm. That sounds awesome. Huh. Well, let me uh <laughs> let me look up some gameplay of this on YouTube. Yeah, maybe we'll look up some uh uh cyberpunk gameplay by other content creators. Ooh, and then I can react to it. Yeah, yeah, genius. Okay. Let's look it up, man. I trust you, member of chat who I just met today. Uh yeah, let's just uh Oh, it has an OST. Ooh. Did copyright? I don't know. Anyway, let's just put um uh, playthrough. Uh no no. Does it have a story mode? Let's put story playthrough. Story. Uh trailer. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Official story trailer. Hmm. Let's look this up. Let's pull this tab out. Let's click right here. Let's pause the video because it's probably got uh ads or something. Uh, let's hit that. Let's close the YouTube premium, uh, whatever. And let's go to my Twitch studio. Uh, I, I like what I'm hearing, Necromancer. I like what I'm hearing. Right, let's uh, switch the studio over to Cyberfunk. 
cyber dragon. And I summon red eyed black dragon. Okay, then we get the gameplay. And um, the game's OST. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. All right, well, let's uh, click the button and oh, let's unmute. Oh, I have to unmute my uh, ride. <laughs> so, usually, whenever I stream, right, I always keep uh, Chrome muted because. You know, a lot of times I'm on, like, Facebook or whatever, doing stuff in the background. But uh, Anyway, we are going to react now. All right. Hey, uh, Tim, yo, hey, clip this, bro. This is a uh, cyberpunk reaction stream by me. Buttonmon14, ready? Go. ヒオクトアカマをなくしたグラフィティライターのレッド謎の人物からこう告げられる五つのエリアのリーダーチームに挑み この街の頂点に立てば頭を返してやるとスケートボードインラインスケートBMXを操りライト市ニューアムステルダムを舞台に繰り広げられるハイスピードストリートアクションモムラッシュサイバーパンクフレイヤーの目的は街中にグラフィ
It boggles my mind as the game got overwhelmingly positive on Steam. Hmm. Well, I think I know the reason for that. And sadly, or maybe I don't. I don't know anything about the game, to be honest. But, hmm. Some of the game rewards, I mean, they do show favoritism. I mean, let's be honest, right, Necromancer? They show favoritism towards shooters. Yeah, like way too much favoritism, you know what I mean? I don't know what got flexed out to skip up, um, you know, uh, Cyberfunk. But, you know, and that's not fair. But like, yeah, man. <laughs> Like, dude, as a kid, I wanted to be just like Tony Hawk, and I quickly realized, hey, dog, <laughs> your axis is off. Like, literally, I tried to step on a skateboard, and just, I broke it in half. Literally, I broke it in half. But, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, um... That, that was kind of my point, Necromancer. It's just like... You know, I'm not going to say anything bad about Marvel. You know, Tim, my uh, my editor, who's always on Discord. Yeah, he's kind of a big Marvel fan, and I don't want to upset him. I'm not a DC fan either. You know, I'm not like a DC fanboy. I, you know, I just... Here's the thing. I like good movies. And I like good companies. And here's the problem for Marvel. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Um, they're flooding themselves. Ah, yeah, pun intended. Yeah, they're flooding themselves. What do I mean by that? They're trying to do too much too fast, man. Instead of making quality movies, games, merchandise, brand, etc., they're just in a rush to do everything. And let me tell you something, Marvel. CEO of Marvel, hope you're listening to me. You can't do it all, man. Yeah, oversaturation. Kind of. Well, what I mean is if you just flood the entire world with Marvel, and one, one or two or seven out of the ten are going to be trash movies, trash games, trash. If you just flood the world a little too fast, you're going to flood it so fast that we get sick of your marvelousness. I mean, uh, did, did anybody watch Captain Marvel? You, you know, the first one. I did. And let me tell you what. <laughs> I've never fallen asleep so fast after paying $25. Okay. Now, does that say anything about the actors and the studio and this and that? Yeah, it does. It tells me one thing. I'm not being entertained. And, I, you know, the fun fact is, Necromancer, I'm not the only one. I'm sure you weren't entertained by the movie either. Or you didn't even buy a ticket, which says it all. You know, if you're not even going to, you know, uh, buy it on, you know, Disney Plus or this or that, you're not even remotely interested. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, see? You know. And, okay. Why did, and like, you're you're not the only one, Marvel. I mean, you're not the only one, Necromancer. You know who else didn't buy, you know, Captain Marvel? Like, 80% of people out here. <laughs> so, like, I'm just saying, man, I'm okay with you creating these characters and tying these universes together and, you know, innovating. I use that word very loosely. Um, no, I'm okay with that. And you bringing in actors and you doing this. Listen, man, all I want is to see a good freaking movie. Every single time. Now, I of all people know one thing. Good movies take time. You know, you got to do your work... It's pretty clear, you know what I mean, Necromancer, when a studio puts like five years worth of work into a movie. Now, I ain't saying Marvel got to do that long for every movie. That's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous, you know. But I can tell, you know how many months they spent filming Captain Marvel? 
two months. How do I, you know that, Flood? Well, it's pretty obvious. Look at the quality. If they spent six months, they only meant it when they were acting two months. Hey, that's on the actors. That's on the people you got signing up. That's on um, Bridget Monaghan or whatever the hell her name is. That's on all the actors and co-actors and side actors. Hey, if they filmed for eight months, they only meant it two months. Hey, man, and that's on that's on everybody, okay? When, they, when you get actors in the studio, they need to act like they mean it. Some people would just act like they there for a paycheck. And it, it is pretty obvious. Pretty, hey, man, because I, I saw the movie. And uh, <laughs> since I fell asleep, I uh, I had a friend. Uh, she, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I watched it again. And I found myself asking, like, so many questions about Captain Marvel. Why is the character not relatable at all? Like, um, who am I supposed to root for here? Right, the good guys, right? Well, that's obvious, but like, they didn't make her like, <laughs> I mean, hey, maybe I'm not the audience. That's always a possibility, but like, clearly I'm not the only one who feels that way because <laughs> like, I've talked to people who watched Captain Marvel and like, I, and like, man, this, this one group of friends I have, like, they're the Marvel group of friends, right? They buy the comic books. They buy the merchandise. They got the posters on the wall. Like, you see how I have all this Yu-Gi-Oh stuff on the wall? Okay, imagine that erased. And instead, it's like Marvel comic posters, right? This people, this community, you know, here in Wisconsin, was so upset with Captain Marvel. <laughs> they promised to boycott the next Marvel movie, and they did, you know, here locally. So... I'm, I ain't the only one who feels this way, man. I mean, Marvel, you got to step it up. See, here's the problem. is like they, they had so many good quality movies, you know, here and there, like especially like Iron Man and some, some other stuff. But, like, they had so many good quality movies that people are just like, oh, okay, Marvel's going to shoot a perfect movie every time. No, no, they're not. <laughs> you know, that's reality. You know, no company is. But the problem is <laughs> they put out so many good ones that we just – when we, and by we, I mean everyone, when everyone hears about that, oh, the newest Marvel movie, we expect it to be good every time. We expect it to be perfect. But uh, Captain Marvel, they clearly only worked a month and a half on it and meant it, you know. So, yeah, that's the problem, man. <laughs> it's, it's just like, now I could talk about DC. You see, DC has, they waste a lot of money. And what I mean by that, you know, you got some good actors. You got like Ben Affleck. I, I like Ben Affleck. And, you know, you, you got like other characters that are clearly the right act. Like the guy who plays Superman, I don't know his name, but clearly he looks the part. So that's not the problem. He acts the part because if you read the comic book panels of Batman vs. Superman, kind of how Superman acts. I mean, so I got no problem with that. The problem with DC is like it's kind of a weird problem to have, but they waste money. What I mean by that is like um they simply do, you know, as a franchise. <laughs> and like you can look into the numbers and stuff. You know, yourself, because like a lot of people don't care about the numbers like, oh, the movie made this amount of money. Oh, they paid this actor this amount of money. Oh, the studio is doing this amount of money. I mean, because DC is going to keep making movies. So that's to them. The numbers aren't an issue. But I'm just telling you, like from a. You got to think about it like managing a football franchise, kind of, or like any. Business. You can only go bankrupt so many times before it catches up with you. And that's DC's problem, is they've had too many bombs. By bombs, I mean in Minecraft. No, but, but by bombs, I mean too many flops. Too many... Uh, now, Wonder Woman was a standout. <laughs> no one expected that movie to be 
<laughs> so, but I got to give Patty Jenkins credit for that. Not DC because they didn't even believe in their own product enough to advertise it. You know, so they got lucky with that one. Um, but like, I guess Flashpoint is on the horizon. Yeah, with James Gunn, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah, they aren't gonna. Yeah, that's and I should they reboot the franchise? I don't know, man. What I do know is they should manage like. Obviously, they've gotten some money, some resources that in that they didn't expect, but you know they as a business, like and they literally are a business. They have to manage their money better, and what I mean is by wasting it. I literally mean wasting it, like where they're spending like, you know, years working on. Let me just name some arbitrary movie, Flashpoint, and then it's going nowhere, because that happens all the time with DC. I guess it happens with Marvel too, but you don't really hear about it because Marvel's marketing strategy is very simple. It's to distract the public by always having a Marvel movie come out right when everyone's like, hey man, we haven't heard from Marvel in a while. <laughs> that's Marvel's marketing. And that's why I say they're flooding uh, the market. And that's because they literally are. <laughs> And hey, that's why some Marvel movies are pretty high quality. Like, hey, it's a team up movie. Oh man, what's Hulk doing in this movie? That's cool, you know. And they distract people with stuff like that. Like, oh man, hey, here's a Hawkeye just randomly here on planet Zeno. Like, what the hell? How did he even? Hey, he's in the movie. That's cool. He's there for five minutes kicking butt, and then he leaves. Okay, so, so see, that's Marvel strategy. Is like they literally flood the market and like. Just when you think Marvel's irrelevant, they have another movie or they have a scene that no one expected or they have, you know, just some kind of some situation that shouldn't be there. They they got Hulk in there when like, like Bruce Banner, what are you even doing here, bro? You're from Earth. What the anyway, that's that's Marvel's strategy is distraction and flooding the market. And is it working? I don't know. It's not failing, but it's working better than DC. I can tell you that. Um, in the eyes of the public, it's working, you know, I, I, I'm a bit like harsh. I'm a bit more, um, uh, judicious, I guess you, yeah, judicious. Yeah, that's the right word. Yeah. I, uh, I don't, you know, player and pizzazz. That's great. And like the first time Marvel did that and like Iron Man was flying in when he wasn't supposed to, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Pretty cool. Or like Thor was in that one movie randomly. Like I was kind of, I was like, cool, but then they keep keep doing the same formula, yeah. And that's the problem for me with Marvel is it's a bit formulaic, you know. But you know, you gotta jump. Hey, hey, appreciate you stopping by, Necromancer. And like people have, like, and honestly, you got me on a good topic because like, <laughs> even some because I post these vods to Facebook too. And people have asked my opinions on, you know, people I know IRL. People have asked these questions, like, for years. <laughs> and I always just say, you know, it's about a five-hour-long conversation. And that's because it is. Because <laughs> yeah. if I were to talk about every single one of Marvel's problems, it would literally be a five-hour conversation. And by conversation, I mean lecture by me, where I literally talk about Marvel's problems from day one. Okay, let's name another one of Marvel's problems. I'll just say it. And it's not really a problem. It's just, it's a self, um, they didn't even need to have this problem. <laughs> but I guess they just wanted to be publicly relevant. And all publicity is good publicity, right? Okay, let's talk about it. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. Pushing agendas in movies. <laughs> Okay, Tim, I said it. I said it. Yep, see you later, Necromancer. Have a good day. Yeah, so Marvel tends to push agendas, social agendas, in movies. Is that right? Is that wrong? I don't know, but they're doing it. Uh, Flood and Mind 14, what do you think about the fact that Marvel is pushing social agenda number 54682-B in movie about Hulk? I'll tell you how I feel about it. Hey, man. 
you know, movies are my like escape, right? <laughs> I don't come to a movie. And okay, first of all, let me preface this by saying I'm a Christian. Okay, I believe whatever I believe. You believe whatever you believe. We respect each other. We uh, we get along. We're we both like Yu Gi Oh. We're friends, right? Right. I mean, because most of you like Yu Gi Oh, and we're we're friends. I'm a Christian. I mean, I believe whatever I believe. You believe whatever you believe. Okay, we got it. That's the premise of this conversation. You know, I don't go to Wendy's and start just preaching. Okay, <laughs> you know, I don't go to your job at Burger King and just start quoting Acts one fourteen. Okay, I mean, I guess I could. Maybe that's what God wants me to do. Whole issue for another day. Okay, but what I mean is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, listen here, VOD watchers. When I go to a movie, I expect one thing. To laugh. To escape. <laughs> you know, my family situation. My job situation. My girlfriend situation. My ex-wife calling me on the phone all the time situation. My kids nagging me situation. Parents, you know what I'm talking about. I go to kid to movies for one reason. To have my kids shut up for two and a half hours. That's why I go to movies. Oh, and uh, it's kind of helpful if I'm entertained along the way. <laughs> Here's what I don't want my kids listening to. Social agenda number 547XA-B-4-921. Now, you may notice I'm not naming a specific social agenda. Okay. That's because, no, no, no. Hey, you can say whatever you want in the movie. Hey, you got freedom of speech, right? Freedom of expression, freedom of creativity. That's great. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know who's going to teach my kids values? Me. And sit down, Marvel. You ain't the parents of my kids. So don't be telling them. <laughs> Social agenda number 542-B. Nah, son. I'll get to that when I get to that. Once they're arbitrary age number blank, I'll tell them that birds and bees, etc. Once they're arbitrary age number blank, I'll tell them, hey, man, you know, we're black. And, you know, there's... A small, a very small section of people out here who hate nails people. <laughs> you know, hey, man, you're arbitrary age number 21. Have you voted? You know what I mean? Like, hey, that's a small issue, voting. I don't want Marvel telling my kids how to vote. And neither does any other parent out here. I'll tell you how I want my kids to vote. I want them to think, research, or themselves. I want them to seek out their own voting agenda. That's how I want my kids to vote. <laughs> if, and this is a big if, because a lot of people hate politics. First of all, can I just say that? Can we just be real for a second? Marvel. Marvel. And Marvel, Marvel has committed this sin quite a lot recently, especially in... We were just talking about Captain Marvel. Okay. They've been push pushing social agenda number 542 at the A-B. And you may notice, I mean, very vague. Whenever I say social agenda, you all know what I'm talking about. I don't have to say point blank, oh, they're pushing this. We don't care. It's a movie. Marvel, we don't care. We don't care. We don't care. It pulls you, I've never been like, because cause you know how you can feel a movie and you can be into the rhythm of it and you can literally escape. You pushing social agenda number 542-B pulls me out of a movie. I've never like, you know, mentally just whoop, 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 reconnected back to reality so fast and until I clearly hear in, in like the newest Marvel movie that, oh, by the way, you should do social agenda number 724-C49. Like, that just, like, and, like, we all know what the message is, right, as parents or as, like, older generation. Even if you're, like, if, you, if you're, like, 15 or older, you quickly get, like, when Marvel's starting to push a social agenda down your throat and you're just, like, I've never wanted to turn off a movie so fast. Why? Because it's the most boring part of the movie. 
Now, am I saying, hey, Marvel, you can't do that? No. <laughs> Trust me, that's not what I'm saying. If you want to keep doing it, fine. But uh, I got a message for you, man. Most parents don't want you doing it. Most kids don't want to listen to it or even don't even know what the, you're talking about. <laughs> Is it a waste of everybody's time? No, I guess not, technically. But, <laughs> you know, some movies have clear, like, signals, like clear virtue signals. And I guess that's fine. My point is, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's not entertaining. If, and this is a very strong if, Marvel, if you are going to virtue signal me, <laughs> Or if you're going to push Shelsuel Agenda number 45DBCH-1, uh, you could at least make it a joke. Make it comedic. Make it entertaining. Make it believable that these characters would even bring this issue up. That's the, pro that's the, that's the last problem with this, right? Okay, when Marvel likes to slip in a social agenda message, it doesn't even seem like, why would Bruce Banner bring that up? Why would... um? Captain Marvel bring that up. Why would Thor bring that <laughs> like you know what I mean like and you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Especially the like yeah, you die hard comic fans just like okay. My suspense of disbelief has been reached. Like in character, Hawkeye wouldn't would never bring this up, you know, because this is his backstory, A B C D E F G. Okay, so let's say you want to include your social agenda, and you're going to do it. Okay, number one, make the character who's bringing it up, make it a believable reason. Maybe make the plot center around it. Okay, that's fine. Make it like a motivation for the villain. I, I don't know. Okay, make it believable. That's number one. Make it really believable. That's number two. Make it like a force the characters have to fight against. Okay, and then make it entertaining. You know what I mean? Make some jokes around it. Make some, like, yeah, make it entertaining. Because if you don't, <laughs> and believe me, that last one's the most important part, Marvel. If you don't make it entertaining, I'm going to stop watching. Or I'm going to walk out the theater. Or I'm just never going to buy a ticket in the first place. Because, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe all of this is from one, like, Captain Marvel comment. But, hey, here we are. But, like, look, dude. <laughs> Like, I am serious, though. There is, like, a big segment of Americans who all we want is to show up to a movie with our kids, you know, have little Timmy back there just shut up for two and a half hours and be entertained. And there's no social agenda. There's no, like, hidden message. There's It's literally Hulk's, Hulk punches guy. Hulk punches another guy. Hulk punches another guy. Hulk makes friends with Captain Marvel. Hulk and Captain Marvel punch people. That's it. That's the whole movie. And it's entertaining, it's funny, the good guys win, that's all we want. And then the kids are cheering and screaming and crying and yabba dabba doing and we parents get to go home. After reality sinks back in. So, <laughs> you know, sorry about that long rant, but it's true, it's, tr it's true, man, it's... Hey man, it's true. It's so true. Like, uh, like that's the most boring part of every Marvel movie is the social agenda pushing, or like the virtue signaling. It, it's it's literally like uh, that's if there's one thing Marvel can't do right, <laughs> it's convince me that Hawkeye is bringing up social agenda number seven four dash B. And. You guys know, hey, you guys watch Marvel movies. It happens in every single Marvel movie. Lately, lately. You know, Marvel movies didn't always do this. When it was Iron Man, it was just Iron Man. And okay, Iron Man beats bad guy, saves the day. Let's go home. Now, now let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. Let's be fair to Marvel. Let's be fair. Does every movie push social agenda? Yes. Is it entertaining? Hey, some studios do it right. Some studios do it wrong. Some studios actually make it entertaining. 
okay, Marvel, take a look at the studios that make it entertaining and copy the formula. Because the one you have right now is obviously, well, I can tell you this, it's pissing off people here locally, you know, who have uh, Marvel posters up instead of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's pissing them off. If you're pissing them off, well, I don't know. Eventually, they'll boycott your movie so many times it actually hurts you. Maybe you don't care about that, though. That's a whole other issue. But, uh, <laughs> like, man, dude. And that, and that's just one issue of Marvel. You know, that's one, you know, trend of Marvel. Like I said, I, hey, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying <laughs> they keep doing it. And there's a segment of the pop. And first of all, <laughs> can we just talk about... Does four-year-old Timmy really understand social agenda number five, seven, eight, eight dash two? No. Does um seven-year-old Kath Catherine really understand virtue signal number seven? Does uh a six-year-old Angela does she understand social agenda number five four two dash B? No. All she wants, all Catherine wants, is to see Captain Marvel. You know, get back to kicking grass. We're keeping this clean for the kids, yeah. Kicking grass and taking names. That's what she wants to see. Because, you know, she looks up to Captain Marvel. Or Wonder Woman or uh, Catwoman or maybe she looks up to Iron Man. I don't know, whatever. But she, what she doesn't want is Tony Stark Stark to go blah 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 for 15 straight minutes about social issue number 79 dash Z dash Omega dash Turbo. She doesn't want to see it. I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. Those birds pooping out there on the deck on my porch don't want to see it. No one wants to see it. The only one who wants to see it is one person. And I'll tell you who that person is. The director of that particular movie. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, maybe one of the actors wants to push their social agenda on the big screen. Okay, that's fine. What Marvel needs to do is say the following. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> you better make it convincing, man. You better make it entertaining. You better... You better not ruin the flow of the movie. Because if you do, next time, here's what we're going to say. You ruin the flow of Captain Marvel. Therefore, here's what you can do in the next one. Shut up. Or, or we're just gonna we're gonna recast. We're gonna recast Captain Marvel, and we'll give someone else the paycheck, who will shut up, follow orders, and fight. You know, in scenes. You know, you know, fight the villains, and just walk away. <laughs> because like, Marvel literally needs to put their foot down. Again, they have options: either keep doing it, or Keep having people complain about it. But uh, if people keep complaining about it long enough, it's going to hit them in the wallet at some point in a big way. Same for DC. Now, now, does DC push social agendas? Yeah, every studio does. You, you know what I mean? But, like, here's the problem I have with Marvel. <laughs> is they push social agendas to the nth degree, bro. The nth. They push it to the nth degree. Let me see if I can draw an N. Yeah, to the, yeah, yeah, let's see. Okay. There we go, to the nth degree. But it's like every movie lately, bro. Well, let me put it, I don't want to be unfair. It's every Marvel movie I've seen lately. And like I said, I'm the parent. I'm the uncle. I'm the buyer of the ticket. I don't want you telling my, my teenagers that ish, man. I don't want you telling my kid. Let me handle that, bro. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Marvel to streamer, Marvel to streamer. 
I'm just telling you, man, this is what most parents think. Let's say you're 25 and single. Do you want to hear this message? No. <laughs> I just asked that girl over there to a date. And, you know, we're going to have dinner after this. And there are certain conversations I didn't want to bring up on our date. But here we are. Now we got to talk about agenda justice number five. Because, oh, hey, do you remember that part? And, you know, when we're having dinner, when I'm having dinner with my date over there. You know, good looking girl. You know, blonde, single, doesn't respond to my advances. But hey, she agreed to be on this date. And <laughs> hey, you, you remember that part in the movie where, you know, uh, Iron Man was talking about that, but that. And I'm like, oh my. Marvel, you just cock blocked me, bro. <laughs> oh, hey, that's relatable. Literally, I guarantee you at least one 25-year-old out here in my subscriber base has had that experience. You know how I know that, Marvel? Because I used to be that 25-year-old. And <laughs> you, you, know what, you know what kind of movies I never take first, date out, first dates out on anymore? Marvel movies. I never. And to God... On my first dates lately, you know, here in, ever since, yeah, for quite a while, I have not taken, or, you know, Disney Plus, Disney Plus exists, etc. We don't stream VOD Marvel. We don't go, you know, if our first date is a movie date, it's not a Marvel movie. Why? <laughs> because of what I just said. You know what I mean? You're about to close the deal. You, you know, it's a good thing. Hey, you're both getting along. You're both just having fun. You're both just enjoying each other's company. There's some issues you don't want brought up, man. You know, on the first, uh, hey, man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm single. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever age I am. I'm in Wisconsin. You know, hey, man, there's some stuff you just don't want to talk about. <laughs> hey, and to that point, maybe that's why Marvel pushes social agendas. No, so people will talk about it. Okay, that's great. You know, if I wanted 25 bucks for a motivational seminar, <laughs> I'd go to one. Listen, Marvel, <laughs> get off your pulpit. You ain't no preacher. <laughs> You're not ordained. Who the put you in? You're not a motivational... <laughs> Hey, hey, that's a I I mean that with every fiber in my being. Executives at Marvel. Hey man, if I wanted to pay 30 bucks for me and my girlfriend to go to a motivational seminar, guess what? On our first date, we'd go to a motivational seminar, okay? Okay. I'm just here to watch Hulk kick the ass of villain number 7, okay? I don't need Hulk or Bruce Banner because he's calmed down now, giving the <laughs> social just, justice speak of the week. Month, year, life, Obama. I don't I don't need Thor talking about Obama, okay? And I, can I just say that? Hey, man, I don't need Thor talking about hope and change. I mean, <laughs> no, 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 no. I've never said what political affiliation I have, and I'm never going to. But I don't... <laughs> Yeah, I don't need Wonder Woman talking about Obama either. I, I, I just don't. Or any of his policies, opinions, you know, etc. Hope change. I don't need to hear that. Well, I don't need to hear that during a Marvel movie. You see, there's a time and place where I want to hear these things. And it's when I watch, you know, news broadcast number 825-B. At uh, 5 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> or when I type in my computer, oh, hey, let me research, issue this, and then I'll hit the enter button, and then all this information will come up, and I'll be like, oh, okay, that's, oh, mm, mm, oh, oh, oh look at this. And, uh, this is the, oh, okay, okay. No, literally, bro. Like, my kids are taught, my my, you know, the young ones I mentor are taught one thing 
seek out your own political beliefs. You know, you're free to change them. You're free to change them, you know, here or there or whatever. Research your own, you know. Oh, if you don't have an interest in politics, that's great. That's fine. I mean, most people don't vote. The people I mentor, you know, that are usually aged mm, about 13 to 21, vote. You know, once you uh, thoroughly research, let's say you haven't thoroughly researched everything. Go ahead and vote anyway. Practice voting. Like, that's that's a that's a big, you know, and, like, the main reason I push that is because, you know, my skin color. Yeah, we weren't even allowed to vote a uh, short time ago. It's, it, it's been a little while, you know, and uh, also Jim Crow laws were bad. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's a certain reason I push voting, and it's kind of understandable. You know, my race... Uh, yeah, we did. Things weren't so good a little while ago, you know. But uh, looking, it's looking up. It's looking slightly better. But like, yeah, dude. <laughs> like that's the the young people I work with. Like, yeah, <laughs> those are the those are the main things. Is like seek out your own, you know, affiliation or beliefs or you know politically or or whatever, and then do your own research. Like literally, thoroughly. You do it. You you learn. Hey. You're new to politics. Okay. You literally don't listen to anybody else. Plug your ears with ear holes, with like earplugs. You literally like, think, let's just say, okay, for example, and I'm not picking on anyone or anything. Let's say one of your social issues is the police. That's a hot button issue, okay? I'm not going to say the police are bad or good or this or that or ugly or beautiful or mid. <laughs> but um, no, like literally you just type in, oh, police in Baltimore. And you just kind of start looking up some stories and you just kind of, oh, they did this or, oh, hey, they gifted this back to the community or they're doing this animal shelter. Hey, I want to work with animals. Hey, you know, I've always wanted to help train dogs and, oh, they're doing this for the foundation over here. And, you know, the mayor hates dogs. Like, oh my God, how could he do that? And I'm not voting for him next year. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, like that's how you start in politics is literally you just kind of, you grab any issue and you just say, hey, let me research it. Oh, is there a lot of police brutality going on around here? Not really. It's kind of nice and quiet, you know, not too many racism things. So I guess I'll fund the police here. You know, these, I'm looking up the record and stats and this and that. They seem pretty clean or, you know, let's go to the inverse. Oh man, I live in LA. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I said, sorry. <laughs> Know. Yeah, those uh those Watts riots weren't so good, huh? Yeah, still pretty in recent memory. But anyway, like again, that, that was just a like for example topic. You know, I don't wanna hey, it's that's an issue. It's an issue like everybody recognizes too. And you either feel one way about police or another in this country, you know, in America or whatever country you're from. You either feel it's black and it's literally black and white. It's literally hot and cold. You either, yeah, love and support the police or you're just like, oh, man, these guys, these guys, you know, they gunned down another Trayvon Martin. What the fuck? And the guy was armed with a pack of Skittles. Watch out. Wait, what? Hey, I, I said I said what I said, man. But um anyway, now that we're demonetized <laughs> You know, in Minecraft, in Minecraft. Oh, I covered it in Minecraft. In Minecraft. We're talking about police issues in Minecraft. 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 Hey Tim, did I uh did I get it in there in time? Or... Well uh, you, you let me know what's going on on the back end.
Yeah, no, no, we're gonna keep talking. <laughs> yeah, social issues and like and like and I, hey Tim, I did that right, right? Like every social issue and every Captain Marvel, like I was very vague, right? Okay, okay, thank you. Like I was, I was so just. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hey, hey, Tim said he's proud of me. He, he sent it to me in Discord, right? Thank you, Tim. Thank you. The Trayvon Martin was too far. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's pretend that never happened. No, it clearly did. Okay, so um, in Minecraft. Minecraft. We're talking about Minecraft. Uh, yep. There's a level of Trayvon in Minecraft. Minecraft. So well, anyway... <laughs> Now that we are demonetized on YouTube, again, um, let's talk about DC and their social agenda problems too. Because yeah, the uh, <laughs> let's talk about Wonder Woman too. So, <laughs> um, I'm not saying that was a flop, but what I am saying is, yeah, Patty Jenkins, the director. You know, the original director of uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, you can tell she got flexed out. What do I mean by that? Well, just look at the direction, the camera angles, and especially like Wonder Woman's job in uh, Dawn of Superman, right? Uh, Batman v Superman. Yeah, you can kind of tell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she got flexed out. She got. You know, something happened. It's just like the way they shot the angles. You know what I mean? The angles. The angles at which they shot. Or even the jokes. The Damn, man. Like, they had a good thing going. You know, DC with Diana. And, uh... <laughs> boy, if there's one thing DC knows how to do, it's take, like, a perfectly functioning car, fill it with cow manure, Grind it down, make it burger size, and then feed it to themselves. And that's DC's biggest problem. It's self manure cow eating. Yeah, man. I mean, I would have rather them not even make another Wonder Woman movie, or even include her in if if that's the way you can include her in Batman v Superman. I would have rather you just leave her out the movie. Yeah. I don't know. Put Flash in there. They greatly misused Gal Gadot's talent. And she clearly is talented. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But they also, like, misrepresented. If you think about who Wonder Woman is as a character. First movie, perfect. Batman v Superman. <laughs> wow, what? I've never seen a greater misrepresentation of someone's character. I mean, same for 1984. I mean, same for, yeah, was it a full misrepresentation? No. But you can clearly tell somebody like, pulled the reins from Patty Jenkins or th whoever the director was of 1980. Like, cause it just, yeah, of 1984, it just, it didn't hit the same. It really didn't. It like, and I understand like in sequels, it's hard to recapture the magic. Okay. I get that. It's also hard to recapture the money. I, I get that. It's hard to recapture the turnout. I get that. But there were just some mo moments of that movie. Where I was just like, what the, what, what's happening? What is Diana saying here? What? You know, but, um, I don't know, man. <sighs> Sometimes some of these people in studios, they get greedy. You know what I mean? They get greedy and just, they see something like Wonder Woman taking off, which only had a budget of like, I don't know, five million or whatever. And before you know it. <laughs> Some guy has the job of direct when he really shouldn't. Or some guy has the job of script writing when he really shouldn't. Or some guy has the job of casting, you know, co-stars when he really shouldn't. 
and I never felt like it showed more than it did in 1984. So, hey, some people love the movie. I hated the entire thing. Like, it, hey, I, I like Gal Gadot. She's, she's cool. And I like her in the original Wonder Woman. But Patty Jenkins, like, hey, that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, I really hated what they did with her in Batman v Superman. You just, just go at that movie and look at the camera angles. And you're like, what in the world? <laughs> what movie am I watching here, man? And some of you guys will really see what I'm talking about. Just look at the camera angles and how they show Wonder Woman, directed by Patty Jenkins. And then look at the camera angles and. Dawn of Justice, you're just like, okay, clearly something is different here. So that's my complaint for DC. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, wow, <laughs> like, like, what were you thinking with that one? I don't know. That's, yeah, wow. Negative for me, you know. So, anyway, uh, here shortly the Ninos. Hi, mommy. Yeah, here shortly the uh. Let me try to turn it on. This. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, you can't even see me. That's crazy. Crazy how that's the lighting. Or should I get close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta leave that on. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't know how we managed to talk about Marvel and DC for however long we talked about it, but there you go. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed me streaming, guys. The end of my career. I regret to inform you, I've been canceled by Twitter, so it's been fun. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I did. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I think so. Dude. We got some newspaper. In. <laughs> and. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. It was Elizabeth. Who? Oh, I'm. I'm but I. Uh, but yeah, it, it was Elizabeth. It was Elizabeth. No, no, you're cool. Hmm. Yeah. Did I get any phone calls today? Okay. I just checking. Uh, let me see. I think I did.
Alrighty. Like I gotta go for now. See you guys next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>